The Northern Territory is a large place. It's hot, mostly dry, and is home to a quarter of a million people who live in cities, towns, and communities. From remote deserts to tropical coastline, all of them depend on water. Water is precious in nature, and tap water is precious too. Power and Water supply this water to everyone in the Northern Territory. It's a big job with many challenges. These videos will tell you some important stories. You'll learn about some indigenous water stories. You'll see what it takes for Power and Water to find and provide water to your home from the cloud to the cup. And you will learn how you can look after water so that every drop counts and we don't waste it. Once you know these stories, then you can say, that's my water. That's my water. Now, let's meet our water champion. Are you ready? Hey kids, it's Baker Boy. I'm a proud young man, all the way from the Northeast Island Man, top of Australia in Northern Territories, in a community called Millingimbi and Meningrida. Your mom, my love, our music is going. I'm using my manicure. The river is flowing. Can you feel the wind blowing? Your mom, my love, my love. Me, I love it. I'm on. So many, you know, many, you know, many, you know, many, you know. Our knowledge for looking after water has passed on from generation to generation. Waterless people live on country. No water, no life. In this video, you're gonna hear stories from the Jawan, Larikia, and Naranda people. Over to you, Mob. So where we are today, we're in Nipmuc. Uh, that's the traditional name from the Jawan people. A lot of people know it as Catherine Gorch. So there's uh, the main dreaming that we talk about, which is Bolong. Uh, he's the rainbow serpent and he created the gorge. So if you look at this place from a bird's eye view, it looks like a big snake-like pattern from the top. What us Jaan believe is that Bolong created the gorge. After he created it, he went around the rest of Australia, creating gorges and valleys. And so it's very sacred for us, the gorge itself. And you know, in our culture, we got to work together with the land. So with working with the land, we're looking after it and the land will look after us. That's, that's our belief. We're looking after water holes, uh, which looks after animals. The animals drink water and that feeds us. Um, also the plants, things like that. Uh, a lot you got your bush medicines, um, foods, sacred sites for women's business, um, men's business. So we can't just walk into the water hole and go swim. By looking after it, we're keeping our culture alive as well. So growing up here, I was taught my culture from my grandfathers, our way of life, how we live, how we respect the land around us, um, what's around us. Now it's my turn, look after the place, pass all my knowledge on that I was taught, and yeah. Quite yeah, water. It's very important because some families are connected to rain dreaming, and also water is important for other people. It keeps us life. I don't know people would go down to the, um, the riverbed and uh, start looking around the special areas to dig for soak and dig in and let the water rise and put uh, rocks around it for that water to surface. That was our drinking water. Our people were very knowledgeable. You know, they knew where to go and find water and there was there was the rockles, there was quite a rua, or that, you know, the water would flow after the big rain and also if we go and dig, dig in the ground as well, quite a for water. Then we can always tell where there's water because we could see a lot of birds around, a lot of animals were around in the water holes, and our family knew where to take us for water and to show us and to pass on that knowledge. And, to, and to also to respect water. You know, water is precious for us. You know, if you see beautiful, clear water, which we know we can go and drink, you don't go swimming in it. You'll, you know, it, it wouldn't be nice to drink. Others who would want to come and drink, there'd be animals and kangaroos and emus and goannas and the birds. They will come and drink that water. There were times our um, elders would go for miles and and they would carry water. They made a little 
special water bag. And that was from the kangaroo's wee bag. And they uh, could carry water, you swing it over and carry it, or pour in coolamans, big coolamans of water. But so far, until they got to an, another, another area where there was water, our families used to get them frogs and squirt water into their mouth and chuck it back in. And then we would look at it, oh, yeah. <laughs> but that was, I learned, you know, that, just, that squirt water, put it back in, and then squirt another frog. And I used to think, what were they doing that for? Why did they? For water. Out in the desert, we have to be very careful how much water we drink. Water is not everywhere in the desert. Here on Larrakia land, one of the places that's very important is right behind me, it's called Old Man Rock. And it's Larrakia people, one of our most sacred places because we believe that our spirit comes from this land. Our ancestors handed down knowledges to us and these knowledges were given to them from our creators. And so these knowledges included song lines. Song lines was a way of writing a map and that way we had a map in by singing songs. We could identify different places and we would never get lost. And what was really important was that we could travel from one place to another and still find fresh water. And so a long time ago, Aboriginal people would make their camps around these places where there was fresh water coming up from the ground. And so this is really important to remember because in the old days, we didn't have shopping centres, we didn't have taps. And so we had to live around places where there was access to fresh water because not only was fresh water our bringer of life, it also attracts animals. And so where the other animals would come down to drink the, from the fresh water, it would allow us to capture and cook them and eat them. Part of this is really important because it's sustainability. And so we had to always protect our water resources because not only was it important that we had water to drink, but we had food to eat. And so this is a very important message for everyone to remember into the future. Wow! How amazing were those stories from all the family up that way? Now kids, what stories and knowledge has passed on to you and how water shaped your life in your community? I'll catch you on the other side.